Hi, I'm Jeanette Larson with Growth Unlimited, and welcome to It's Your Life, Have It Your Way. Today, we're going to be talking about change once again. We've been doing several different videos on change because in our current day and age, everybody in the world seems to want change. And the problem is we're having a hard time finding a way to change things effectively. So what we're talking about in this series of videos is what it takes to make effective change in your life. And we've been talking about why it's difficult, what the frustrations are, and why people have a hard time doing it. Today, we're going to be talking about a theory that Michael Broder, a psychologist who has been working with people on helping them make changes in their lives for over 35 years, developed called the Seven Stages of Transformation. And we're going to be talking about those different stages. Now, these stages were actually developed uh, after a lot of research and work that Dr. Broder did with uh, using theories that were put together by other famous psychologists in history, including Sigmund Freud and Milton Erickson. Uh, and the stages that Dr. Broder put together are stages that we all find ourselves in at different times in our lives. The stages are developmental. They are stages that we we grow in terms of being able to achieve higher stages of ability to make changes or do whatever it is in our lives that we're using the stages for uh, as we develop personally. And, uh, of course, the higher your level of personal development, the more capable you are of doing whatever it is you want to do with whatever stage it is you're in because you have more stages available to you. It is a cumulative thing. So we're going to be talking a little bit today about the seven different stages and some of the traits that appear in those stages at each level. Uh, as we go through them, I invite you to do some soul searching. Identify stages that you have seen yourself operate at because that will help you analyze what base stage you operate at most of the time. And uh, it also will give you a chance to take a look at the different stages in life that people do operate on and determine what stage you would like to be operating on in a given situation or across the board in your life. Then in future videos, we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. In fact, we're actually going to be offering a course that will help give you more information about each of these stages of life and a uh, more in-depth understanding of what's going on with them and actually help you master and craft plans to develop the stage of life the stages of life that you have access to so that you can take control of your life uh, in more effective ways and become more effective in controlling what's going on with you. Uh, all part of personal development, all part of the process of self-actualization that all of us are working on. Okay, stage one, according to Dr. Broder, is the only possible stage that a person can have at infancy. In stage one, you're extremely dependent on everybody else. You have to rely on everyone else for everything that you need, everything that you want. Uh, this is a stage that later in life, if you operate at the stage, you're, you are looking at it being the responsibility of somebody else to supply the basic needs that you have or that you need, or the things that you want in your life. Examples of this are people who are looking to government or churches, agencies, or other people to supply their living, to supply, uh, in some cases, I've been talking to people recent, uh, over the last year or so especially, who have the opinion that it is the responsibility of the government to supply them with a place to live or to supply them with an education, or to supply them with health care. People who have these beliefs are operating at the level of stage one. Stage two is a typical stage for toddlers. Toddlers are exploring a little bit more. They're very focused on themselves. Uh, in their world, uh, 
the world revolves around what they need and what they want. And they don't have a lot of awareness of what other people may need or other people may want uh, because they are so focused developmentally on what they want and what they need that they're not ready to look beyond that. Uh, this life without internalized limits can result in primitive and undisciplined behavior. That's why toddlers oftentimes throw temper tantrums and uh, you have those kinds of issues with very young children. When you see this level of behavior in an adult, uh, these, uh, the life without internalized limits, the, un uh, the undisciplined and primitive behavior that see often erupts in violence, illegal activities, uh, behaviors that are not acceptable to other members of society. There is extreme self-centeredness at this level uh, and a tendency to act out and create as much chaos as possible in the lives of other people, for yourself and for others. In stage three, this is usually the, uh, the stage that we see through late childhood. Uh, it thereafter can morph into various degrees of an authoritarian personality in adults and or rigid rule abider who's extremely inflexible regarding rules and ideas. Basically, at this stage, uh, at this stage, children generally are learning to obey rules. Uh, the world is black and white. They, uh, if the rule exists, the expectation is that they're going to obey it. And uh, the world is very narrow because they don't have a whole lot of personal control. They are being dictated to and run by the dictates of others at this stage. People who are adults who are in stage three, as, as I said earlier, uh, usually have a very authoritarian personality. Their world, too, is very black and white. Uh, some of the phrases that I've seen uh, used for people that are living in the stage is it's their way or the highway. Uh, they, uh, they are very dogmatic and very judgmental in terms of their opinions of how other people are behaving. Uh, and uh, it's basically either right or wrong. There are no gray areas. Okay, in stage four, which is the typical stage throughout adolescence, there's a lot of change happening. There's a lot of exploring, testing, experimenting, you're very, very focused on your image in other people's eyes, how other people perceive you. You often have to seek the opinions of other people to get uh, validation and verification that you're on the right path. You don't do a whole lot of self-determination. You are uh, you're exploring, testing things out, pushing limits, seeing how far you can go. And uh, as an adult, this kind of stage can result in anxiety and depression, self-doubt, alienation, shame, and a wide variety of neurotic and approval-seeking behaviors. Um, people in this state, if they're operating this stage, as I said, are very focused on what somebody else thinks. Uh, particularly in terms of how somebody else thinks about them. And they are focused on gaining approval from someone else. Uh, they oftentimes, even if they have particular beliefs or values or principles that they say that they live by, they can be swayed from them based on how somebody else is going to perceive what they choose to do. Okay. In stage five, which is the typical stage for an adult in our modern society, the person thinks of themselves as a role juggler. They have many different things that they are, uh, they expect of themselves and are expected uh, to do by other people. And who their identity is tied up in a sum 
of all those roles put together. Um, their view of life is usually pretty comfortable, dispassionate, or neutral. Oftentimes, they do not engage in getting involved in something because it's better to not rock the boat to let sleeping dogs lie. Uh, in many cases, this stage is actually the stage where people function best because what they're focused on is doing what's necessary to keep their life together and functioning and occasionally looking at what they need to do to move beyond that stage into higher stages. Now, it's important to have a stage five frame of mind at times with respect to certain relationships and activities. But it often can result in disappointment when you expect higher degrees of fulfillment than you can achieve at this stage. And so that's why people aspire to move to stages six and seven. Now, stages six and seven are the target stages for, that most people aspire to. Um, and you achieve those stages by removing blocks in the other stages that stop you from getting them. Stage six, Dr. Broder classifies as the mature adult. This is not determined by chronological age, but rather by the way uh, the person conducts their life. A stage six person has a strong sense of integrity and sense of self. They know who they are. They stand up for what they believe. They don't deviate from the choices that they have made in terms of their values, principles, and beliefs. At stage six, they rise above their roles and operate according to these values and passions. Your values and passions become your driving force and you achieve genuine spirituality, fulfillment, and happiness. This is the stage in which you love, enjoy, excel, and create in your own distinctive way. Now, stage seven is the highest stage attainable. At stage seven, you're beyond needing self-gratification and find fulfillment as a result of your benevolence and your unique contribution to other people, to the world, and to how you can be an agent for change in some large or small way. At stage seven, your purpose outside of yourself has a lot more importance to you than what's purely in your own self-interest. Now, as I said before, each of these stages actually has a place in our day-to-day -day life. There are some situations that we need to function at a different stage than other situations prescribe. As I went through these stages, were there stages that I described that resonated with you? That you could say to yourself, hey, I was in that stage in this situation. Or this is where I generally sit. This is probably the base stage that I operate at. The next thing you need to ask yourself once you've, uh, you've identified that is what stage do you want to operate at as your base stage? And then the real task begins once you've identified that by starting to move towards being able to operate at that stage. These are the things that we're going to be talking about in the course that I'm offering. And we will cover them a little bit with other, during other series of videos that we talk about too. Thanks for joining me today. If you found this video helpful and haven't done so already, please subscribe. That way you'll be in touch with us as we have new offerings. Invite your friends to join us and visit www.growthunlimited.org 
for more ideas on how you can take control of your life. Thanks again for joining us. And by the way, if you're interested in the course that I talked about today, check out the links below. There's a link offering that course at a, a very, very good discount so that you can learn how to transform the stage of life that you're in. Thanks so much for joining us and have a wonderful day. Bye now.